is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2025 volvo xc90 courtesy of younger volvo in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we're in the new 2025 xc90 today because there's actually plenty of changes for the 2025 model year and of course volvo being known for excellent safety the xc90 is an i IHS top safety pick plus so I'll just start by telling you guys that right off the bat that is the very highest designation given out by IIHS so that pretty much says it all right there and in case you were curious the XC90 is competing with others like the Genesis GV80 and the BMW X5 but ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the xc90 for 2025 however those trim levels are slightly different for the 2025 model year so the first trim is going to be the core b5 starting at 58,695 plus b5 for 61,995 and lastly the ultra which replaces the outgoing ultimate trim for 2025 that one is going to start at 67,595 dollars and like i mentioned all of those were for the b5 engine configuration i'll get more into that in literally a second here the b6 is the more powerful engine if you wanted that one simply add 3600 dollars then to any of those prices but like i was alluding to there are two different engine configurations for the 2025 xc 90. First one is going to belong to these B5 trim levels. That one is powered by a 2 liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system, putting out 247 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 258 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,500 RPM. That power being sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic. Zero to 60 time for that one coming in at approximately 7.3 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city, 28 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. But then there is that other engine configuration and the the one that we are currently in today actually that one is actually the same engine but it does put out a little more power coming in at 295 horsepower 5700 rpm 310 pound feet of torque coming in at 2200 rpm again power sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time for this one though 6.4 seconds so almost a full second quicker there with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 26 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the xc90 did want to mention to you guys the drive modes we actually have a few different added driving modes for 2025 and i know this because i review literally every single volvo this is crazy i i didn't even see this on volvo's website so you got the off-road mode of course that was just like last year you got the steering feel firm mode i'm actually going to go ahead and turn that on that's just like last year as well but now there is a suspension feel firm mode as well and there's an air suspension button i see when it comes to driving dynamics there at the bottom as well so a couple little added modes for 2025 that is pretty stinking cool so we'll get more into the suspension in a little bit but for now let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2025 xc90 here up to speed all right turn it back on to the main road here let's go dang that's smooth too buttery smooth shifts and that thing is plenty quick xc90 you're definitely not going to have any issues in marching onto the highway matter of fact i think i reviewed the b5 last year so i'm kind of glad that i got the b6 last this year because this thing is pretty darn good and like i said it's a very luxury like acceleration very smooth shifts which isn't always the case like i know mercedes-benz sometimes launches you forward with their shifts especially in their amg cars so this is a very elegant like but very quick acceleration so kind of the best of both worlds there i really liked that so absolutely no issues there and i think i said last year if i remember correctly that the b5 was plenty fine as well to merge you onto any highway it's just the b6 just a little bit quicker that's all but anywho to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.6 inch ventilated rear discs as far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes that comes in at an insanely respectable 113 feet that's a sports sedan number you guys you know that you know i love that so as far as braking feel goes 
I love it. That is 100% on the firmer side of things. It instantly brings you to a stop. And I love it because traditionally in SUVs, especially in three row SUVs, you find kind of soft or squishy braking feels and there's no emotion to them. And I guess it makes sense with Volvo being known for safety that it would want you to come to a very insanely quick stop so you don't kind of hit anybody in front of you. So that is amazing. I love the braking feel in the XC90. They crushed it with that. But Anywho, continuing on, then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get an unequal length control arm front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been brilliant in my short little test drive here today. I hit a lot of bumps coming out of the dealership, as I always do, and uh, this absorbed them beautifully, like better than most of the vehicles I take. So incredibly incredibly incredible ride quality here in the xc90 without a doubt as far as steering feel goes I, it's it's interesting okay so i did put it in that steering feel firm mode and it did kind of increase the weight of the steering a little bit it feels a little bit unnatural if i'm being completely honest though so i don't know it's okay but it's a little unnatural feeling but anywho that's just my personal opinion as far as cabin noise goes this thing is incredibly serene so a very luxury like cabin indeed because this thing is super quiet on the inside i gotta love that did want to also mention in terms of cabin noise with the xc90 acoustic laminated front windshield does come standard for all trim levels across the board but here's one of the new things for 2025 yet again acoustic laminated front door glass now comes standard on the plus and the ultra it came standard on that ultimate trim slash ultra last year but it now comes standard on the plus as well so that's of course contributing to our perfectly serene cabin that we have with us here today and like i said when i was adjusting the driving modes there is now an air suspension button so that is pretty stick and cool whenever you have an air suspension that is going to absorb any road imperfections beautifully so you're going to get the very best ride quality possible and uh, I absolutely love that. So that is pretty stick and cool that that has been added. Um, it does have a suspension feel firm mode. Let's go, just go ahead and hit that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to tell the difference, but anyways, let me go ahead and I'm um, coming up on a bump right here. Yeah, you might be able to feel a little bit more of the road with that. I'm not sure why anybody would want firm mode unless you're carving through them through some back roads and you want to feel like you're in a sports car maybe. I don't know, but this is an SUV. I'm not sure why I would need that personally. So I'm just going to leave it on the comfort suspension, which is not in the firm mode. So that's been perfectly fine for me. Touching our rear visibility, I do have the third row up right now and those third row headrests, I will say, do kind of take up a good bit of that rear window. But I would imagine if you didn't have any third row passengers, you just fold them down and you would be perfectly fine. Rain sensing windshield wipers do also come standard on the XC90. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers, just like automatic headlights. So you got to love that. And if you were to go with the ultra trim level like we have today, you also get a head up display, which is kind of hard to see with sunglasses on. Typically, that's the case with every single manufacturer. But if I pull these suckers up, I can see my speed and speed limit. And of course, it's going to display safety features up there as well. So that's pretty cool, too. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Volvo XC90. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2025 Volvo XC90 finished in vapor gray. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today i love this color i think it looks dang good but as always let's go ahead and start with where the xc90 is made one of the best parts about the xc90 here taking a look at the vin first character is the letter y indicating that the xc90 is still built and assembled in sweden even this sticker i'm showing you guys it says assembled in sweden you gotta love it that's so cool because it's so rare that we see cars from sweden here in the u.s but anyway so let's go ahead and start up front on this one led headlights with led thor's hammer daytime running lights in typical volvo fashion of course automatic feature coming with those headlights along with automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there so you gotta love that of course you got that volvo signature front grille and that's going to come with your choice of either a bright or a dark finish meaning either chrome or gloss black surrounds dependent upon that finish that you go with of course and then you guys can see down below at the very bottom corners there you will find some led fog lights but those fog lights believe it or not come with the cornering function you never see that except on a super safe volvo like the xc90 because so when you're going around a bend at night those fog lights are going to swivel 
little bit better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a sasquatch or an alien or whatever the case so that's pretty stinking cool but again very recognizable look up front you know this is a volvo the instant you see it i like it i think it's a timeless design very elegant but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the xc90 silver roof rails do come standard now there's crossbars that we got up top those are an added option but i do think they look dang good up there as well but chrome window surrounds also coming standard you got rear privacy glass to go along with all of that taking a look at the side mirrors they're body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turd signals as well and of course they are power folding so when you lock this one up they're going to fold in when you unlock it's going to fold back out so that's pretty stinking cool you also have illuminated door handles though that's going to come standard on all trim levels as well so that's pretty stinking cool but one of my favorite parts about the xc90 that almost every other suv doesn't do is you got body colored side skirts and body colored fender surrounds i feel like even in luxury vehicles they will finish those in a matte black that's traditionally what you find in suvs but that's not the case in the XC90. It's a much more clean, a much more elegant look. I'm gonna use that word again, sorry, but it definitely looks good. It looks better than if it were to be finished in matte black. I'll just put it that way. But then take a look down at the wheel setup. I love these wheels. I'll explain why in a second, but 20 inch alloys coming standard on that core trim level and the plus. And by the way, that's newly standard for the core trim level. It actually came with 19 inch alloys for the 2024 XC90. So a little bit of a difference there, but then 21 inch multi-spoke diamond cut machine finished alloys they look so dang good i always love the machine finish as opposed to like the silver painted alloys or the gloss black alloys they just look so dang high end i love it i love these wheels but anyways i'm rambling that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper fixated to the rear glass you got the volvo lettering spelled out horizontally it's a very classy look right there led taillights to the sides of course for added illumination at night there and just below it all you will actually find dual exhaust outlets however they are tucked away now they didn't used to be that way but they are now now. so nonetheless having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the XC90, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate for every single trim level across the board, so you gotta 100% love that, but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 41.8 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded, 85.7 cubic feet and that's about the same as a like a toyota highlander or a honda pilot i know they don't compete with each other but what i'm trying to say is that is a decent amount of space back there so you gotta love that and the seats do fold completely flat essentially so definitely was a fan of that as well you got a 12 volt power outlet back there led cargo lighting you traditionally find halogen bulbs back there so leds in the back you gotta love that too grocery bag hooks chrome plated tie down anchors there is a cargo strap back there a little bit of storage in the corners there you got a first aid kit and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will actually find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat which you guys know i love to see personally but there's actually some buttons back there to lower down the tailgate area a little bit too because of the air suspension you can actually lower that for a little easier easier access I guess so that's pretty stinking cool and then you can raise it back up when you're done so another cool little feature I don't remember seeing in the XC90 before but then make your way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 31.9 inches for reference I'm an even six feet tall this is how much space I had in the third row and by the way third row comes with two passenger seating as opposed to three passengers sometimes it's three sometimes it's two so wanted to mention that rear ventilation does come standard back there you will find some cup holders and a little bit of storage but when you flip up that storage lid you will find a cool little spider with some reading glasses on because 
That is what I always like to see when I fold up my uh, storage bin is uh, a spider with reading glasses. That looks happy though. So better happy than angry. That's my opinion. But anyways, then making our way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 37 inches even. Again, I am still in even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the second row there. Four zone climate control is going to come standard. So both rear passengers there can set their own temperatures as well. So that's pretty stinking cool. Heated rear seats coming with the climate package. It goes for $750 if you wanted that you got dual phone charging ports for the second row passengers um, you have your choice of either bench seating or captain's chairs for the second row we got the captain's chairs of course that's what you guys are looking at if you go with the bench seating you will get a rear center armrest with cup holders otherwise you are just going to get a little bit of cup holders just in front of those second row passengers there and one of my favorite parts you do have rear window sunshades for those second row passengers as well so big fan of that but then making our way up to the front seats eight-way power adjustable front seats do come standard memory settings coming standard as well for both driver and passenger for up to three different drivers and passengers so that's pretty sick and cool leather seating coming standard heated front seats coming standard as well one of my favorite parts you got the flag of sweden found on the passenger seat and uh, volvo does that for every single one of their vehicles so you gotta love that also another little easter egg since i'm mentioning them if you look at the seat belt buckle it actually says since 19 1959 on there as well so another easter egg you gotta love it with volvo and i got more coming for you guys so stay tuned here but ventilated front seats are available for the front passengers then as well overall as far as seat comfort goes it was plenty fine not as comfortable as like lexus f sport seats in my opinion but yeah it'll definitely get the job done i didn't have any issues but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped it is traditionally a two-tone steering wheel you can get that but we got the all monotoned with us here today uh it is heated though with the climate package as well 10 and 2 grips they were perfectly fine so steering wheel is 100 on point now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Volvo logo on the one side, but all of your buttons are located on the side of the key. So you got lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with a turn knob start. So the way you do that is you simply put your foot on the brake, you turn it to the right to start, and then you're curious, you turn it to the right to stop as well. That's the way it works. But once started up, there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that looks plenty good definitely a very large screen up there i like it speedometers all the way to your left tachometers on your right you got the navigation set up front and center so i 100 love that tells you how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature towards the top you got speed limit recognition up there and you can scroll between different things up there as well if you wanted to but digital gauges are plenty fine there but so then make our way to overall interior quality if you wanted a panoramic roof it does come standard for all trim levels across the board so you gotta love that also aluminum trim inlays do come standard wood trim inlays are going to be optional like we have today you gotta love that frameless rear view mirror with home link controls to up to three different garage doors found on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror you got an or force crystal shifter if you go with the ultra trim that we have today and i love this crystal shifter it is so stinking cool volvo does an amazing job with that crystal shifter from or force but let me give you guys another little easter egg here so you may be wondering how do you open up the glove box because if you looked there's no handle actually on the glove box there is however a button located just underneath the infotainment screen there and when you press that the glove box does open up for you so that is pretty sticking cool and the xc90 has done that for a while now i think and i've always been a huge fan of that it's just different so it's a very clean look there's very few buttons on the inside of this xc90 which i personally like another really cool thing couple really cool things uh the suede headliner this is one of the first things i noticed when i got in this one i don't remember seeing that last year either so very soft finish because it's suede of course and aluminum speaker covers. We got the Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which is optional, which I love. And you got aluminum speaker covers, not only on the doors, which is traditional with upgraded sound systems, but you also have this nice aluminum speaker cover found just above the infotainment screen here as well. So a lot of very high end finishes like the suede headliner and the aluminum speaker cover. So very, very nice. And the crystal shifter, but just in front of that crystal shifter, you got a little bit of rubberized storage. Just to the right of that shifter, you got your cup holders. Everything surrounding the shifter is finished in gloss black. Of course, the cover for the cup holders is finished in a nice matte wood trim. I love that as well. And within the center armrest, there is a decent amount of storage in there. You got a couple phone charging ports in there as well. So overall, Volvo did an amazing job with the interior quality on this one. So 
it's just crushing it so far in this entire review. I'm just saying. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. You're going to find a 9-inch tablet style color touchscreen display. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You got a factory navigation system coming with that as well. You can actually check the air quality, which is pretty stinking cool. It's just an app on there that tells you the air quality at any given time. So we got good air quality today. So I'm digging that because I got allergies. And actually, you can check out YouTube up there as well. It's so stinking cool. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Put on my channel here so i'm gonna search gold pony but anyways uh you could also check out your radio information of course as well so when it comes to the sound systems there are several of them first of all 10 speakers and 224 watts does come standard there's an optional harman kardon sound system that's a 14 speaker sound system with 600 watts goes for around $800. Then there is that optional Bowers and Wilkins sound system that goes for $3,200. And this should be phenomenal. So you guys know what we're going to do next here. We're going to go ahead and turn on the radio. We'll see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out our Bowers and Wilkins sound system that we have with us here today. I've always said this before, Bowers and Wilkins is absolutely amazing. That is an incredible sound system. I think it's really the clarity with Bowers and Wilkins that really does it for me. Like you feel like you're at a concert. It's it's absolutely phenomenal. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the XC90 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. And you can probably see you also got the 360 degree monitor button there in the middle, giving you that bird's eye view, letting you know what is completely all around you which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so, like I said at the beginning of the video, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, that's the highest rating given by IIHS. So you can't beat that. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, rear collision warning, and speed limit recognition then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, here of the XC90 still super safe this is what Volvo has always been known for and this is what they are still known for today also love the Easter eggs in the XC90 like the flag of Sweden like that since 1959 lettering as well I think that's taking coal brilliant braking 60 to 0 what did I say 113 114 feet that's a sports sedan number braking feels definitely on the firm side of things instantly brings to a stop I love that personally incredible interior quality aluminum speaker covers you got the wood trim inlays you got the suede headliner definitely a lot going on here as far as room for improvement goes I will give you two things here one Where's the wireless phone charger? Maybe I missed it. Maybe it just doesn't have one, but we do have the ultra trim. So you would think it would be pretty easy to find and I just don't see it. So maybe it doesn't have it. So that's one thing. And also the thing in the back of my mind, I think if I were to get an XC90 is what about the reliability? Like, I don't know that Volvos are necessarily known for being reliable. You could check out consumer reports. I could be dead wrong. I don't review reliability because I don't have these cars for that long of a period of time, but it could be great, but I just don't know because other than that, this is a remarkably perfect SUV, at least for me. Like it checks all the boxes that I would be looking for personally. So let me know what you guys think of the new XC90 in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media stuff at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.